All right, hello there, everybody. Uh, we are here to actually construct Hess's Law cycle, right? So this is, of course, a section from the chapter five, Chemical Genetics of AS, right? So before we actually get into how to construct the Hess's Law cycle, uh, it's very important for you to actually understand first what is Hess's Law all about, right? So that's the definition that you can see over here, which basically mentioned that the total enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route taken provided the initial and final conditions are the same. So remember, it's very important for you to actually note down that the total enthalpy change is independent of the route taken, right? Provided that the initial reactants and the final products are the same. So um, reaction could progress in one single step or reaction could actually progress in multiple steps. As long as reactants and the products are the same at the end of the day, the total enthalpy change will be the same. Now I have two simple uh, cycles drawn up for you guys over here, one on the left, which is actually conversion of A to B, and the other one's actually uh, conversion of X to Y, uh, for you to actually look at uh, how to actually construct the Hess's Law cycle based on the supporting information that is actually gonna be given to us. Now most of the time, um, Hess's Law cycle questions are gonna give us supporting information such as enthalpy change of formation, and enthalpy change of combustion. So on the uh, first cycle that we're going to be looking at over here, let's look at uh, A convert to B over here. The supporting information given to us, look at the enthalpy change given here. Now, presumably the enthalpy change of combustion is given to us for A and B. So A and B over here will combust to give you the same common product. In this case, it's C. Right, usually uh, things like uh, combustion reaction, right? Uh, the reactant and product when they combust, they should actually give you the same exact compound. In this case, I label it as C. So what happened is that uh, if you need to find out enthalpy change, which is actually labeled up here, delta HR, to convert A to B, right? So if you need to alternate ways to find out the enthalpy change of this conversion of A to B, you can actually capitalize on this particular cycle. Remember what Hess's law is all about is that they mentioned that total enthalpy change of a chemical reaction is independent of the route taken, right? Provided the initial reactant and the final products are the same. So therefore in this case, if you look at the A convert to B, maybe just one single step over here, but you can also convert A to B via C, right? You can actually convert A to B via C. So how you're gonna do so is that basically you need to convert your A to C first, Right, and once you actually got your C, C then is converted to B, right? So this this cycle over here is actually kind of complete, and it actually allowed us to actually find out what's the enthalpy change of conversion of A to B via C. So the only trick that you have to actually be wary about here is that uh, you are actually going to be changing the direction of one of the arrows of the supporting information given to us. Now remember. A convert to C, right? It's an enthalpy change of combustion. B convert to C is also another enthalpy change of combustion. But because we actually need to convert our A to B, right? So the route we're taking over here is the one that is given in the arrow in green color. So therefore, if you want to find out enthalpy change of reaction of conversion of A to B, you of course take the same direction as the direction that is given in blue color arrow over here, which represents enthalpy change of combustion of reaction one. And of course, uh, you notice on the uh, right hand side over here, right, I actually put plus minus enthalpy change of combustion of reaction two. Right? Why is there a minus sign over here for delta HC2? It's because that you're reversing the direction of the arrow in order for you to find out the enthalpy change that you need to find out. Bear in mind, whenever you change the direction of the arrows for, from the one given in the supporting information, you need to change the sign as well. So this is a, an example over here, what the, on you need to do in order to actually find out enthalpy change of conversion of A to B, which is one single step, all right? The alternative route is actually you go through C, right? So A will convert to C. The direction of the arrow is actually following the direction that is actually given to us by the supporting information as well, which is delta HC1. So no problem whatsoever. You retain this particular value as it is, right? But uh, unfortunately, right, B convert to C is the supporting information given to us in the question. 
All right, so uh, we're gonna get from, however, we're gonna get from C to B over here. So you're gonna get from C to B, you need to be changing the direction of the arrow. So therefore, uh, what you need to do is that uh, you need to actually therefore change the sign of Delta HC2 in order for you to actually get the enthalpy change of this particular reaction. Now bear in mind, eh, uh, when you're constructing your cycles, you are only constructing it based on the supporting information given to you. So if the question stated the uh, enthalpy change of combustion of A, enthalpy change of combustion of B is given the question, then all you need to do is that you just draw the arrow according to the supporting information. Therefore, both of them are actually going to be getting your C. The green color arrow is not required to be drawn. The green color arrow is basically just for me to visualize to you guys that uh, you need to take that particular route whereby you actually convert your A to C and then C to B in order to find out the enthalpy change for this particular conversion of A to B. Please bear in mind about that because uh, you need to really be able to construct the uh, cycle based on the supporting information given to you. Right. Um, um, before I move on to the next one, I just need to make sure that you guys understood what is the enthalpy change of combustion. Make sure you understand this because uh, there will be cases whereby when you construct your own cycle, you need to actually multiply the enthalpy change of combustion appropriately based on the number of moles that's actually given. So the definitions as given at the bottom over there. Okay, we've mentioned that in the last video already, so I'm not going to take so much time to talk about this. Right. Just make sure that you understand that enthalpy change of combustion is defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of uh, element of Combined, being completely burned in excess oxygen under standard condition of 298 Kelvin and 180. And the one mole over here is for the element of compound. So if you see your element of compound being burned is actually more than one mole, you need to multiply the enthalpy change um, accordingly. Right? Well, let's move on to the cycle on the right hand side. For the cycle on the right hand side, you see the uh, conversion of X to Y is one single step. Right, conversion of X to Y is one particular step over here. What if they give you supporting information of the enthalpy change of formation of X and enthalpy change of formation of Y? So of course, if enthalpy change of formation is given to you, you know that uh, you need to have the elements to be written at the bottom. That's what I mentioned in the previous video. So what happened is that uh, this is the cycle that I have actually come up with based on the supporting information given to us. So we have enthalpy change of formation um, um, one, which is the conversion of the elements to the uh, compounds that is actually right above, which is your X. We have enthalpy change of formation two, which is the enthalpy change of formation of the um, conversion of Z, which is the elements to the compound Y here. So cycle is pretty much there, right? You construct it based on the supporting information given to us. Supporting information given to us is enthalpy change of, enthalpy change of formation. So therefore, this is a cycle that you draw. So now, we will need to figure out how we need to actually find out the enthalpy change of reaction of the conversion of X to Y. What is the alternative route that you're actually going to be needing to take? And you're right. You need to actually take the route via Z in order to get to Y, right, from X. Right, so what you need to do now is really just actually do this. The green color arrow actually tells you what to do. You actually need to make sure that you convert your X to Z first. And then after that, you convert the Z to Y in order to find out the enthalpy change of reaction of X converted to Y. Now you do notice, right, the arrow is actually going to be going on the opposite direction, right? When I say that X had to be converted to Z. Now remember, supporting information given is enthalpy change of formation. That's why we have our arrow, arrow storing upward over here, right? To indicate the elements at the bottom forming the product right above. Unfortunately, we want to get uh, from X to Y over here. So that's why we need to actually uh, change our direction of the arrow. And remember, when you change direction of the arrow, you need to actually change the sign given in the question itself. So enthalpy change of uh, formation um, one, okay, will have to actually have its sign to be changed to the opposite one, right? Whereas for enthalpy change of formation two, the uh, arrow is following the direction as what we need it. So therefore, we are keeping it as it is, and that's basically what you need to do in order to find out enthalpy change of reaction of conversion of X to Y. So this is basically just a simple um, cycle that I've actually come up with. And again, of course, the definition for standard enthalpy change of formation is very important, right? Again, we've actually covered it in the last video. Really make sure you're able um, to understand this properly because it always says that enthalpy change when one more of compound is formed. So if you have, um, your, your compound form is actually not one mole, 
uh, in fact, it's actually more than one mole, then you have to actually multiply the enthalpy change of formation accordingly, right? Okay, I hope you get this, right? There's just simple um, cycles over here that I've created in order to make you realize what is actually at hand here. So therefore, I'm going to look at some examples now. I have two examples prepared for you. The first one is this. Now, draw an enthalpy cycle to calculate the enthalpy change of formation of ethane. Ethane is uh, C2H6, right? Uh, in the gaseous states, right? Given this enthalpy change of combustion of carbon, hydrogen, and ethane is the values given up there. So the first thing you should do is, of course, construct your equation or standard enthalpy change of formation. And it's all written there in blue already, right? So remember, you want to form um, one mole of ethane because the definition of enthalpy change of formation stated that it's a total enthalpy, sorry, <laughs> enthalpy change of formation is actually stated as the uh, enthalpy change when one mole of compound is formed. So you must make sure that's one mole of ethane is actually formed here from its elements of carbon and hydrogen, right? Under its standard states, under standard condition of 298 Kelvin and 1 atm. That's basically your, what do you call this, uh, equation that you need to actually have, right? That's what you need to find out. That's your enthalpy change of formation, right? Uh, we are given the supporting information of enthalpy change of combustion, right? Of uh, the carbon, hydrogen, as well as the uh, ethane over here. So what you need to do is that just, just support, uh, I mean, just, write, just draw out arrows, right? And write down what is actually going to be produced when carbon, hydrogen, and C2H4 are actually going to be combusted. So this is what you're going to be seeing, yeah. You notice that uh, carbon, when you burn them, you're going to get carbon dioxide, obviously, right? Uh, hydrogen, when you burn them, of course, you can get H2O. And when you burn your C2H6, you're going to get your CO2 and H2O. So you see, uh, uh, Hess's law cycle, they're always going to be um, having some relationship with one another, right? So as you can see over here, right, the uh, reactants, when you combust, you get products of CO2 and H2O. As uh, C2H6, when you combust, you also get CO2 and H2O. That's how they're linked together. It's only with this kind of linkage you're going to be able to solve uh, questions using the Hess's law cycle, actually, right? Of course, you notice also there's a times two over here for enthalpy change of combustion of carbon because of two moles of carbon, right? There's times three over here for the enthalpy change of combustion of H2 because there are obviously three moles of H2. Here we retain as it is because there's only one mole of ethane that needs to be combusted, right? Uh, bear in mind, state symbols are going to be required. Make sure when you draw your cycle, all the state symbols are all indicated within your cycle. All right, cycle is complete, right? Based on the supporting information given in the question. So this is the cycle. This is the one that's gonna give you a mark in exam. So next, what you're gonna do? You need to find out the ways of how you can find out uh, the enthalpy change of conversion of carbon and hydrogen to produce C2H6, am I right? So therefore what you need to do is that uh, you need to actually think uh, how you're gonna get from this point, which is point A to point B. How do you convert to point A? How do you get from point A to point B over here, right? So yeah, how, how are you gonna get that, that reactant to turn into product in an alternate uh, um, um, alternate uh, ways, alternate route, I should rather say. So what you can do is that uh, you will need to actually come down, like what is the indicated by the green color arrow over here. Now again, the green color arrow is not uh, required to be drawn out in exam, right? The green color arrow is just for me to show you that uh, you need to take this direction. You need to take this direction, right, uh, as indicated by the arrows in green, in order to find out the enthalpy change of conversion of reactants to the product. So you need to come down, right, for carbon, the uh, enthalpy change of combustion of carbon to form CO2, enthalpy change of combustion H2 to form H2O, right? So you're going to get uh, this carbon and hydrogen to turn to CO2 and H2O as the product on the, um, yeah, at the bottom over here. Right. Once you're at the bottom over here, you need to find your way to reach the product side. And how do you actually reach that? Is of course by changing the direction of the blue color arrow that were actually drawn up based on the supporting information given. So when changing the direction of the arrow, you need to actually now change the sign as well. And therefore, in a solution, if you notice that the enthalpy change of formation can be obtained just by you know two. You know, just add up, you know, the enthalpy change for the, this particular reaction, enthalpy change of this particular reaction as indicated over here, right? But what you change over here is the enthalpy change of combustion of your ethane. In this case, we have, remember, supporting information given to us is, yes, enthalpy change of combustion of ethane. But we need to move in an opposite direction. When we need to move in the opposite direction, you need to make sure you change the sign. 
So therefore, with that, just calculate the answer, punch in the calculator, you're going to get your answer, negative 84.7 kilojoule per mole. All right, okay. So uh, that's basically how you actually construct the um, Hessel's loss cycle based on the supporting information of enthalpy change of combustion that's going to be given to you um, in the um, question itself, right? So this is just one cycle over here. We're going to quickly move on to another cycle. This is another example here. Uh, this time, the reactions between aluminium and iron three oxide, they're going to form, of course, uh, iron and also aluminium oxide here. Enthalpy change of formation data are given to us. Enthalpy change of formation data are given to us. In this case, uh, enthalpy change of formation of iron three oxide and aluminum oxide is given as given the value here and here as well. So again, we want to find out the enthalpy change of this main reaction over here. So this is like, for example, yeah, X needs to be converted to Y. Correct or not? Your X needs to be converted to Y via one single step. But of course, we don't have that uh, information available to us. So that's why we are actually constructing Hess's law uh, cycle over here in order to solve this particular question. So and temperature of formation given. So you must make sure that you have your elements written at the bottom, arrows pointing upwards to the uh, compound that is actually formed. So in this case, yes, you're forming uh, iron two oxide and aluminum oxide from the pool of elements given at the bottom over here. Now, you just, all you need to do is just make sure you point arrow from the bottom to the top. doesn't matter from where it is, right? As long as one arrow from the bottom to the top, we already understood that you're using the pool of elements at the bottom to form the compound right above. So in this case, uh, we have um, enthalpy change of a formation, all right, of the uh, iron three oxide as well as aluminum oxide given to us, right? So this is a cycle, a complete cycle already complete cycle, rather easy one, because um, the other two, um, what do you call this, uh, aluminum and iron over here does not require you to form them. And temperature formation of aluminum and iron are both uh, zero because they're elements, right? As long as they're on earth, and temperature formation of it will be zero. So therefore, there's no, uh, no need to actually form them. That's why there's no arrow pointing upward as well. There are also the uh, elements in the standard state. So therefore, yeah, and temperature formation of it is really going to be zero. And the question was not mentioned even. Right, so the cycle is complete now. You need to actually find out how to convert uh, my reactant over here to the product. So what do you need to do here? How to convert your reactant to the product? You need to take uh, an alternative route now, correct? So therefore you need to be going downward over here and then move upward. I repeat, you go down and then you go up, basically following the uh, green color arrow that I have actually given to you. So what does that mean? If you notice that the green color arrow basically are actually opposing the blue color arrow given um, in the supporting information, right? So what you need is really to make sure that uh, you change the sign, right? It's negative 824.2 kilojoule per mole as the standard enthalpy of formation of iron three oxide. But you need to go the opposite direction in order to find out the enthalpy change for this reaction. So when you go the opposite direction, right? You need to make sure you are actually changing the sign for the enthalpy change of um, that iron three oxide. So therefore, in this case, from negative, it turns to positive, as you can see on the solution on the bottom. So it's 824.2 kilojoule per mole. Plus, yep, this is following the direction of the arrow given to us, negative 167.5, um, 0.7, sorry, 167.7 kilojoule per mole were actually given to us. So therefore, uh, it's following the direction of the arrow, following the direction of the enthalpy change of formation of aluminum oxide given to us. So therefore, we are just going to just add this value up together and your answer is yeah, negative 851.5 kilojoule per mole. So that's basically two cycles that we have actually constructed here, right? Um, I hope that you find this video informative. I hope that you find this um, 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 good in, um, in, in preparing Hess's Law Cycle, right? So if you do right, like this video, right, just make sure that uh, you share it with your friends, right? Give me a thumbs up, put it in your comments, right? Thank you very much. I see you again in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.